Here it is guys, today I'm gonna to go over all the settings that I use in my A7 cameras at a wedding day, just so you can see how I shoot. Now this video is definitely gonna be a little bit controversial because I'm a little bit different than most professionals. This is just the way that I shoot. I haven't always been like this. Firstly, let me give you a little bit of a backstory about why I shoot the way I do. So originally I started about 20 years ago when I was about 15, I'm 35 now, and I started on film, playing with my dad's film cameras and stuff like that. And then I bought like digital cameras, so I had a point and shoot and like a couple of bridge cameras and things like that really wasn't happy with them so my first proper SLR camera was a Canon 1000D twin lens kit which I shot my first wedding on and you know it was fine I really wasn't that skilled back then so I was still learning the photos were half decent I guess but anyway I bring that up because I started so long ago you know I was shooting in manual I never shot aperture priority it didn't really exist on my first cameras and when I bought my 1000D, I was still shooting manual, always manual. That's just how I shot. That's just what I was used to. That's what I learned, so that's what I shot. Fast forward all the way up to about four years ago, uh, I was talking to a friend of mine. He's gonna love that I'm dropping his name here. Peter Reese. he's another old school photographer, uh, lives on Waiheke Island here in Auckland, good mate of mine. And you know, he's an original photographer. He asked me, why am I shooting in manual? And I said, what do you mean? Why are you not shooting manual? Aren't you a professional? You know, with my young buck attitude. And he said to me, you spend all this money on cameras, you buy these really nice, really expensive pro cameras that have amazing metering systems, amazing CPUs in them that can, they really know what to do. And you just take all of that away and shoot manual. Now, I kind of thought about that for a little bit and I think, nah, he's wrong, that's just stupid. I need to shoot manual because Otherwise the camera is going to go all over the place and I'm not going to know what's going to happen. My editing is going to go up and I'm going to take much longer to sort of fix everything. But I tried it anyway. I chucked my camera in aperture priority. Now important factor with this is that I set my auto minimum shutter speed to 250th of a second. So what that means is my shutter speed is not going to drop below 250th of a second until my ISO gets to 8000 or 12800, whatever I've set the max at and then the shutter speed is gonna start dropping. But it's gotta be pretty dark, and you know I know by then, especially when I'm shooting at 1.4 primes, at 1.4 and 12,800 ISO, it's gotta be super, super dark to drop below 250 of a second. Now what I find when I'm shooting an aperture priority is I really forget about everything else other than the light and the composition and the emotion and the moments that are going on around me. Now I do still use manual sometimes, so if I'm ever using flash off camera or on camera, I'll always use manual because it just doesn't really work when the camera's in aperture priority. Another reason I use manual is say if I'm in a big church for example and the lighting's not gonna change for the, an hour ceremony, so I'll lock it off in manual and regardless of where I point my camera, I'm not gonna have to be adjusting it. I'll also use manual say on a dance floor if the DJ lights are going crazy and just sort of shining in the camera and making it freak out. But where aperture priority really comes into its own is all the way through getting ready photos, the bridal portraits, most ceremonies, all that sort of stuff. And you really just concentrate on what's going around you rather than you know moving dials around and changing settings and things like that when you really don't have to. Trust these expensive cameras that we buy. Now this is just genuinely what works for me. This isn't gonna work for everybody. I'm not saying I'm right and you're wrong. I'm just saying this is what works for me. You guys asked for it, so here's the video. I do shoot about 50 weddings a year. I am a full-time photographer, so I guess I know what I'm doing, and this just works really well for me. So anyways, let's jump into the back of the camera and I'll show you how I have everything set up for a wedding day. Okay guys, let's jump into the back of my camera. I got it set up on a tripod here, and I'm just gonna go through all the settings and show you how I shoot with my A7s through a wedding day. I am on the A7R 3 so I shoot compressed raw. I don't find any difference in quality, and the file size is much, much smaller. So really important there. And I'm only shooting raw, I don't shoot JPEG as well. I have all my high ISO noise reduction turned off and I just use the sRGB color space. Now you guys might have to slow this video down or pause it every now and then because I don't want to make it too long. Drive mode, I usually have to continuous shooting and I usually have it either on medium or low, most of the time on medium. The memory settings, I'm gonna get into those in another video because I have my camera set up individually for me and it's not gonna work for everybody, especially because I use my cameras for YouTube and video as well. Focus modes, I use continuous AF, obviously you guys know already I'm on back button focus. So I have AF on set to back button and I have AEL button here set to eye focus. So I'm always in continuous, I have no need for any of the other modes. Now focus area, I'm generally using expand flexible spot. Now that's just the one that you can move around and you sort of get the small center point with the ones on the outside that just sort of tackle it if it can't find what you're looking for. 
Otherwise, I use expandable spot medium, sometimes small if I really want to pin pinpoint something. And the other one I use is zone. So I use zone when I'm on the dance floor or it's really dark and I just need to get whatever I can and focus and I find that works flawlessly for any kind of um, really low light situations especially like on a dance floor. This is an important one to change this is turned off by default so you want to go into set face priority in AF and have face detect frame display on. Now what that does is just show the little grey box around the faces before you even try and autofocus. So just so you know that it's picking up faces. Tracking sensitivity I have set to 5 I think Normally it's set to 3, I don't know if it makes much difference, I haven't really tried it a whole lot. And AF with shutter I have turned off because obviously I'm in background and focus and if you have that on it's kind of pointless and just completely voids the purpose of using back button focus. Pre-AF I have off because it's really annoying. I don't want my camera focusing when I'm not doing anything with it and it does drain the battery life a little bit. Now this is where it comes into what I'm talking about with um, aperture priority and using auto ISO. So my ISO I always have set to about 100 minimum and 8000, sometimes 12,800 on the maximum side. And the key here is going into auto minimum shutter speed and I have it set to 250th of a second. So what that means is my camera is not going to ever drop below 250th of a second until my ISO gets to 8000 or whatever the max is that I've set. So that just means that it has to be really, really super dark, especially when I'm on 1.4 primes for my shutter speed to be going below 250th of a second. So a lot of guys kind of freak out because you're using aperture priority and you're worried your shutter's gonna sink. If you can't set the minimum shutter speed on your camera like I can on this one, then this probably isn't gonna work well for you because you're gonna to have to keep an eye on your shutter speed. So for me, I just use 250th of a second for the minimum shutter speed. Some people might go lower, some would go 500, but 250th is what's comfortable for me. So again, that's just going to make sure my shutter doesn't drop below 250th of a second until my ISO gets to 8000. Metering mode I have in multi because that's just going to sort of meter the entire area. And I, like I said, I just use my exposure compensation dial to adjust as needed. I also have face priority and multimeter on just so it kind of prioritizes the face when I'm in multi. I'm just going to skip through these so you guys can pause them and set your camera up exactly like mine if you want to. Let's just not make this video too long. Now white balance I have set to auto and you'll notice I have it set to auto white. I didn't know this was a feature until quite a while after I bought these cameras. So you can actually set your white balance what it prioritizes. So you can have standard, you can have auto white balance that will sort of prioritize ambience or you can have auto white balance that prioritizes white. Now <laughs> that seems kind of stupid to me. I don't know but I find that when it's set in white it's a little bit more neutral and just works a little bit better. Creative style I have set to standard pretty much all day. Sometimes a bit of a trick that I do if the colors are really ugly or distracting or I'm just having a really hard time with like really bad colored lighting in the place that I'm at I'll just switch it to black and white and because I see black and white through the viewfinder as well it just kind of takes away all the ugly colors and all the distractions and all I can see is light and shadow and composition. So it just really works well for me. Now you have to be shooting raw in this because if you shoot JPEG and black and white it's going to stick and you can't get color back. When you shoot black and white with raw as soon as you bring the files into Lightroom it's going to just put it straight back to color anyway. So it's really only a visual thing that I use. Picture profile I have off. Um, I'm going to do a separate video on that because it's quite in depth and it's only really to do with video so I'm not going to go into that this time but I will make another video on that really soon. Peaking settings I have set to on, mid and white so when I switch my my lens over to manual it just automatically comes up to the settings I like. Anti-flicker shoot I have that off because I just really don't like the way it behaves sometimes it can sort of make your shutter lag if it's picking up some kind of flickering where it doesn't really matter so I have that turned off unless I'm having a really hard time with lighting and then I'll just flick it on and, and uh, you know it works really nicely. Face registration I don't use it's a really cool trick look it up what it basically does you can register the bride and groom's faces in the camera so you take a photo of the bride you take a photo of the groom you can register their faces and put their names in and then when you're in a focus mode it'll prioritize their faces like it has face recognition and it will detect their faces and pick them out of a bunch of people. It's kind of weird, it's pretty cool, I just don't use it because it's too intense for me. <laughs> I'm going to skip past the movie modes because again this isn't really about movie modes but I'll go through them. You can pause it if you want to see anything that I have set up here. Silent shooting I have off but I do have it programmed to C3 here, this function button. So when I'm in my normal shooting mode I can just press that and 
quickly choose silent shooting if I want it. Electronic front curtain I have on and make sure you have release without card disabled. So that means that when you don't have a memory card in there, the camera's not gonna let you shoot. So you know you don't have a memory card in there. Find a frame rate I have to high. Um, I think it's on standard by default, kind of stupid. It looks way better when you got it on high. So if you're finding a viewfinder is a little bit laggy, check it on high and it'll probably fix it for you. Auto review I have off because with mirrorless cameras, every time you take a photo and auto review is on, it just brings up another preview of the photo you've already seen and kind of slows the whole process down. So I really don't use that. Custom keys, I'm just gonna quickly go through these and you can pause the video and set your camera up like mine if that's what you wanna do. So page one, page two, and page three. Custom key video is exactly the same. I haven't, I don't have it changed at all. And I'm gonna do the same with function menu. So you can go through these and pause it as you like if you wanna have your camera set up like mine is. Audio signals I have off, otherwise it's all standard. And the only thing in here is usually I have auto airplane mode on because it does save a little bit of battery life. And I just turn it off if I wanna transfer something to my phone and edit it on like the Visco app while I'm at a wedding. Now display quality I have set to high. That is also on standard straight out of the box. Don't know why again. Power save start time, I have set that set to five minutes so my camera's not turning off all the time, going to sleep. And I have my auto power off temp set to high. Now that just delays the warning until your camera actually gets hot and then it gives you the warning on the back of the screen. Now, just to be clear, I've been shooting Sony two years and I've never ever had a camera overheat. Touch operation I have off because I just, I'm really not kind of a touchscreen person. I do have it programmed to C4, so I can just turn it on and off when I like it, but it's really not something I use. I don't know why, I just never have been into touchscreen. Now set file name I have set to CM1, and my other camera set to CM2. So that's Chris Turner Media is my company name, and one for camera one, and two for camera two. Record media settings is pretty important. Now, I prioritize slot one, that's just standard, but I have my mode on simultaneous photo, now that just makes sure I'm shooting raw to both slots with video on slot one. So because slot one is a lot faster, it's a UHS-2 slot, you can use a really fast card and it works much better when you're doing video and photo. And then that's my quick menu that I have set up there. All right guys, that's it. So you've seen all my settings, you know how I shoot. A couple of things before we finish. It's really important that you get to know your camera. See, I really know how my Sony's behave in that situation, and I have the exposure compensation dial on the top right of the camera that I can just move around with my thumb. So I usually shoot about 0.7 under if it's a really bright situation, just to recover those highlights later on. So I often find I'm bringing my exposure up afterwards, but it's usually by the same amount every time. So what I do is edit one, and then I'll sync the whole series of photos, and I find they're pretty much bang on. So that's pretty much it from me, guys. Thanks a lot for watching subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys tomorrow with another video